The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers nor Rogers TV. Welcome to the Rogers TV Georgina 2018 Municipal Election Debates, produced in collaboration with the Georgina Chamber of Commerce. I'm your host and moderator on this segment, Dave Selassie. So this show features candidates for the position of Regional Councillor slash Deputy Mayor. Both positions are assumed in this role. I'll in introduce the candidates shortly, but first I want to explain the ground rules that we will be following. Each candidate will be given one minute for their opening statement at the beginning of the debate and one minute at the end for closing statements. A random draw was conducted to establish the order for both of these, the closing statements in reverse order to the opening comments. The questions have been developed by a committee, the members of which I thank, based upon input that we received from the community. The candidates will have one minute to respond to each question. But if a candidate wishes to address comments made by another, or if the question needs more discussion, I will open up the floor for debate. So getting started, let me introduce the candidates to you for the position of Regional Councillor slash Deputy Mayor. Starting from my left, Rob Grossi. Welcome, Rob. Thank you. In the middle, Naomi Davison. Hi, Welcome, Dave. Naomi. And to my right, Lee Dale. Welcome, Hi, Dave. Lee. So move right into opening comments, beginning with Rob Grossi. You have one minute. Thank you, David, first of all, for volunteering to do this. And thank you to Rogers TV, Georgina, and to the Georgina Chamber of Commerce for hosting this event. I will, first of all, want to congratulate the other candidates. It's always uh, difficult to put your name forward in a public forum, and I congratulate them for seeking the opportunity to represent the town of Georgina. And I also want to thank the viewers for taking the time to view this broadcast to make an informed decision with respect to the 2018 election, October 22nd. Uh, my name is Rob Grassi. I've been a volunteer in this community and I've been a full-time resident for more than 30 years. I had the privilege of serving this community for 20 years as an elected official, 17 as the mayor, and three as a local councillor. This is an important election in the town of Georgina, and I believe we'll have some discussion about many issues, but I think there's three key issues that we need to discuss. Taxes and spending, the environment, and a budget right now at the region of York that is over $3 billion. Thank um, you very much. Your thank you. Up. I appreciate it. Okay. Moving to opening comments by Naomi Davison. No. Very good. And thank you again to my my fellow contestants here on what seems like a game show, but it's not. Um, it's much more important than that. Hi, Georgina, I'm Naomi Davison. I'm asking for your support to continue as your regional councillor and deputy mayor. Over the past eight years, I've dedicated myself to Georgina first as a ward councillor and for the past two years as your regional councillor and deputy mayor. I've had the honour to work with many talented and dedicated staff, council members and volunteers who care deeply about our town. That's why I'm here and that's why you're watching, because we all care deeply about Georgina. We need to ensure that the region of York hears our message, and I've been doing that. Working alongside the mayor, we're getting our message across. With my fellow council members, we worked very hard to calm the waters so that we can move forward. We've created a strategic plan, clearly outlining our path forward. We've increased our reserves by millions and invested them responsibly, earning hundreds of thousands of dollars of interest. We have master plans for fire, recreation, roads, parks, and economic development, and we're getting things done. I've been looking forward to this election to show you more about what I can do for all of us going forward. Let's start this debate. Thank you very much, Naomi. And now moving to their third candidate, Lee Dale. Your opening comments, please. Thank you. Uh, as Dave mentioned, my name is Lee Dale. I'm running for the role of Regional Councillor Deputy Mayor. I'd like to thank Rogers TV and the Chamber of Commerce for putting on this televised debate. I'm Georgina Grown with family and loved ones in all five wards. I'm a hardworking father, husband, and son to some of Georgina's finest. I have worn many hats in my professional life, from business owner to committee member for infrastructure management, including budget, tendering, permitting, and creating cohesive partnerships. More recently, I have gained experience in municipal asset management and reorganization. I have always followed town business closely, even speaking and representing residents and businesses on several issues. I am a volunteer and coordinator for Sandgate Women's Shelter, support several charities like Hospice and Jericho Youth. I also work tirelessly to promote business in Georgina. 
I won't be here today to peddle the same political promises you hear from the same candidates every four years. I am here to bring my work ethic, knowledge, and fresh ideas. With that, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Now we'll move to the uh, question format of the, of, the, of the debates. And once again, I remind the candidates that if you want to be, after each one has a minute to speak, if you want to respond to something, uh, another can a statement another candidate has made, or have more information, please just indicate to me and I'll recognize you. Okay? So we'll begin with the first question with Naomi Davison. York Region is seeing both rising affluence and deepening poverty. Uh, the United Way reports that, I'm quoting from their report, the social infrastructure has not kept pace with the physical infrastructure. A lack of affordable housing is another major gap as government incentives to build dedicated rental stock were eliminated soon after York Region's boom began. My question, how will we be able to address the increasing need for affordable housing in York Region and Georgina. Very good, thank you. That's actually something I've been spending a lot of time um, talking to and thinking about in the last little while. Um, York Region definitely has an issue with housing for those people who don't make a lot of money. So they're still working hard, in, and it's not a matter of finding necessarily always affordable housing or subsidized housing, though we definitely need more of that. Um, just the idea of being able to purchase a home. Um, one of the specific things that I would like to work towards is something similar that was uh, just recently done in Newmarket, and it was purpose-built rent rental housing. And the land was provided, and the develop developer did build. And so I've been speaking with uh, the councillors in Newmarket to be able to see if we can replicate here what was done in Georgina or what was done in Newmarket. So um, the ideal place for me, I think, for that will be right next to our new recreation center. We can create a specific zone that allows for that, maybe allow for a higher tower than what's, uh, what's currently allowable in Georgina in that area. And the reason that area is ideal is because there is no local housing around that currently. So we could build it in a space next to the rec center, next to shopping, on a major transit route, um, and then go higher. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, going to uh, Lee next, you have a minute. Okay, thank you. Um, so affordable housing is obviously a, a tremendous issue. Um, beyond that, I think seniors housing under the same vein, over 20% of our population in Georgina are aging seniors. Um, there's not enough housing affordable for seniors and for families, and I think that is an issue. Um, Naomi's initiative that she talked about, the program in Newmarket, is, uh, is actually a really interesting program. Um, I think there is also opportunities uh, when building to use uh, non-aggressive sites um, on main routes to build new affordable housing. Um, I don't always think that you need to coordinate or house them within a compound. I, I really feel that that turns into something where these people are, are left somewhere. We've seen that in loans, we've seen that in other places in the community and it doesn't help them get the outreach in the community. So I, I think it needs to be spread out. I think it needs to be affordable. Um, and like I said, that, that uh, new market initiative is very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Move to Rob. Um, thank you, David, and thank you for the question. You know, it's interesting, when we bought the link a few years ago in Sutton, the whole idea was to talk to the region of York about uh, combining and partnering on that property for some social housing, perhaps some seniors housing. And, um, you know, a few years ago, the former elected regional councillor, Danny Wheeler, and I worked very hard to get a building that's built on the Queensway that provides some of those services today. I haven't heard any discussion at the region of York over the last four years with respect to social housing or seniors housing, and I really think we should move forward. We've got the land next to the link. Why aren't we proposing something like New Market or what's happening in Vaughan or Markham at a facility like that? I've done it in the past, I can do it again. We, we had some success when it came to what's happened in Keswick, and I just think that it's unfortunate that, that, that our voices haven't been heard at the region. Okay, uh, I want to open this up for a little bit more debate. There's some more comment here. Particularly though, I'm finding a, a tension between whether the municipality and the region should be taking that responsibility on, or if there should be ways to incentivize the uh, private sector to do it. And I, if that's the option, I'm wondering to what degree 
you would provide incentives. Naomi, you wanted to get in on this. I just did want to respond to that. Um, there has been conversation at the region, extensive conversation at the region about the link property and about what options might be there. Um, actually, York Region is coming into the link property and going to be providing an enormous amount of social services through that facility. Um, the idea of social housing on that site is not new. It's something that we are, are advocating for. However, as um, the former mayor does know, we don't have the allocation to create any more housing in, in the Sutton area. And so that has to be a, a topic for another day. What I'm looking at is where we actually could build those things. And right now we have the allocation available in Keswick, and I think we need to create that opportunity there. Well, definitely, we have the property at the link. The property is not going to go away. And when they expand um, the sewage and water capabilities in the Sutton area, we can look at that again. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to sure, you know, yeah, the, the, the issue of the water in. and sewer capacity has, has always been a very flexible one. If, if you speak to the people who are the planners uh, within the, the town of Georgina, you will always see that there is industrial capacity that's been shifted to residential capacity. If you can create a, uh, a good partnership with another level of government, and, and I'm not abstaining from including the provincial government or the federal government, because there should be a social forum that includes all of those partners. So I'm not, uh, I, I'm not suggesting that we can do it alone, but I, certainly we can do it with some partners. And there is a way of doing it if you talk to the right people. Okay. I want to go into the next question, but did you want to just weigh in on this? Just, just very quickly, I, I, think, I think the province is an important uh, partner in this, in, in the sense that they mandate the growth. And if they're going to mandate the growth and put pressure on communities, they need to provide a tool for us to provide affordable housing for our residents. So <clears throat> that's it. Thanks. Thank you. And let's move on to our next question. And uh, Lee, you're going to start with the responses to this one. The average rate of inflation in Canada over the past four years was 1.58%. The Georgina tax rate over the same period was almost three times that with an average increase of 4.5%. Do you believe Georgina is capable of bringing its tax increases in line with the rate of inflation? And if so, how would we do it? If not, why not? Well, first, I think um, in our current course, I don't, I don't believe so. I, I think um, the more projects, the more uh, urgency we have to commit to programming and infrastructure without a proper commercial industrial or institutional tax base uh, we're setting ourselves up for disaster uh, we continue to push forward on initiatives um, in my opinion half-heartedly um, and without proper uh, incentive we spend tremendous amounts of money on consultants and there's that's no way to bring the mill rate down you know, for every four-year term of council, it takes 10 years for a large business to settle within a community. And each and every day that we push it farther back and don't make the right push for a commercial business, we are setting ourselves up for higher taxes, plain and simple. Thank you. Thanks. Move to Rob. Well, you know, I said in the opening, Dave, if you can't afford it, then don't spend it. Um, and I've seen some of the things that this council has put on the table. Uh, when I left public office four years ago, we were in pretty good financial shape with our reserves and uh, the monies that we had in the bank. And today I look and I talk to people who are afraid of what the future costs are going to be to live in this municipality. I'm not sure, quite frankly, if we need a new civic center today. If you look at the way governments are changing, is the same structure that we have today going to be evident two or three years from now in the town of Georgina? Uh, what about more community-based services? Should we be putting more of the you know, kinds of services that are at the Civic Center into a space down at the new recreational facility in Keswick? Maybe they should be incorporated there instead of building another library a mile from the current library. So there's lots of discussion going on. But the one thing, if you don't have it, don't spend it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, we've looked at the tax rates. Um, I've been on bo the previous term of council and this term of council. And what I found with the previous term of council that I didn't necessarily understand fully while I was there is that we had very low tax increases, but it wasn't sustainable. And the reason it wasn't sustainable is because we use things like regional adjustment to artificially lower our tax base. We use the supplemental taxes that come in um, at the end of the year with new residents that have come in. Rather than putting that to reserves, we had our council direct that towards directly 
straight to lowering the taxes, and it's not sustainable. You can't build for the future by mortgaging and taking the, the information from the past just to keep those tax rates low. We passed 1.9. We passed a 0% tax rate, rate. We weren't even keeping up with inflation. So what we've had to do in this term of council is take a look at the future. We had insufficient reserves. We've increased our reserves. We didn't have planning for maintaining our facilities. We've fixed that. We were left with the link, which was a huge place to drop money into from the previous council, and the rock, which we have to make financially sustainable. That's, that's time. Uh, do you so want to, is, I know is, Rob wanted to come back on this, so let's stay on this one for a moment. Lee wants to talk. Herself, then. She was on the last term of council, and now she's saying that this term of council, for whatever reason, is all of a sudden doing a great job. We did some great things in reserving monies to make sure that we could do what we said we were going to do and afford to do it. We didn't raise taxes 4.5 percent or whatever the average was. That We're not you doing said. that now either. That's, well, that's what David said. So I'm using the, the three times the inflation rate is exactly what David said. So you know, if you can't afford to do it, then why are you spending the money? Then why go did we knock, buy the link? And, then why did we on, buy the link, Rob? Go, go did we have millions of dollars now, to fix the link? Hang on for half a second. Go, go, Rob, finish and go and knock it one day. You know, if you want, why did we buy the link? Well, the, the link was purchased as a property. I'm not sure whether we were going to go forward with that physical structure or whether we were going to change it. We talked about seniors housing. This council decided to move forward with a revitalization of that I'm going to let sure. you get in here now. Sure. Thanks. And as far as the link goes, I think anybody that pays attention to uh, town and council remembers all the, you know, the closed session fun of the link over uh, the, the term before this one. So I'm not going to address that. Uh, I'm sitting beside two very well seasoned politicians who haven't told you that there is a way to bring the taxes down. There is a way to bring business. All they're saying is this is the way it is. And it's unacceptable. Thanks. Now we wanted to make you, you were interjecting there a second ago, give you the last word on this one. Thank you. No, I think it's important um, to note that, yes, I was on the previous term of council. Um, and you know what? When you're a member of council, you're one of seven. Um, and when we had our council come forward, we had, we had projected a 2.7% a tax increase. Um, and it was fine, and we were comfortable with that. And the regional adjustment came in, and I begged the other members of council to put that money into reserve instead of to artificially lowering the tax rate. But I lost that one six to one. I get that. I understand that. I begged. On my, almost, I would have gotten down on my hands and knees to have you, uh, or that council put it to reserves for the future rather than to lower the tax rate artificially, but we were getting close to election and they wanted to keep you the rates low. I would be happy to, so to, I yeah. think I I was, happy to look at those, uh, those figures. Look at the I, tape. I, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure going to move on to the next question, but I, I will say that those figures did come from the town website, well, from the town, town budget, so it's uh, well done. Let's move on to the next question. Rob's uh, first in on this one. Sure. Since its approval in the 1980s, the Maple Leaf Estates project has been controversial. Uh, recently, the town participated in the local planning appeal tribunal that was brought by the North Golden Bay Forest Alliance on behalf of the developer. The town participated on behalf of the developer. What position do you believe the town of Georgina should take with regard to the proposed Maple Leaf Estates, and what actions would you propose? Great question. So, you know. Uh, categorically, I can first of all say that I have always been opposed to the Maple Leaf Estates development. Um, however, it was approved by what was called an order in council more than 30 years ago at the province of Ontario, which bound the local municipality because of the approvals that were put in place by the province of Ontario. Uh, I think we have a very opportune time right now with a new mm -hmm. provincial government, with a new attorney general, with a person who ran in this municipality, has a very high profile, and has the ability to make some change happen. What we need to do is have the province of Ontario make a fundamental decision and take those development rights and do much the same as what they did with the Oak Ridges Moraine. The Oak Ridges Moraine, if you remember, they transferred those rights over to another area within the province of Ontario, a place called Seton, Ontario. I believe that with the intervention of the province of Ontario, a discussion should take place where the right development rights would be transferred to another area. Okay, and that's our time is up on this one. Going to move to Naomi. 
Thank you, Dave. Um, I, you know what, I, I concur with a lot of it. We were in the same position looking forward to this. It is a provincial order in council. We can't overturn that as the town of Georgina. However, what we've done sort of going forward up until now, we do have a new provincial government. Uh, we had multiple meetings with the previous provincial government, didn't get us very far with trying to come up with another option for it, a land swap or something else going on. Um, we already have had meetings uh, with our new MPP about it, um, and we're looking to wait for the outcome of the LPAT and then get something done. So we have to wait for that legal proceeding to pass through. Once that passes through, I do agree, there's no reason to have development on that piece of property. We have to find a new place to put it. So that's my opinion for sure. Thank you. Go to you, Lee. Well, first, I guess I feel it necessary to say that I oppose any development on that on those lands. Um, I've spoken about it in the past. It is something um, with a positive relationship that I have with our MPP and our uh, Attorney General that I've spoken with in the past. I've spoken very recently about it. Um, I believe that the province is the solution to the issue. Obviously, the municipal legal issues have to go. Um, but I also want to make clear um, I don't support the $71,000 that the town spent um, fighting against stopping the development. I don't support using tax dollars in legal battles uh, to commit to environmental disasters. I just don't. And I believe the solution is with the province, and I, and I do believe the solution is with the land swap. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, we're a little bit running a little bit behind in our time, so we're going to uh, put, put off uh, d debates until uh, a few more questions, and we can maybe even go back over them. Uh, we can challenge that after, okay? Um, I want to move on to the next question with, with uh, you, Naomi. Um, is remembering that this is a, for a regional councillor, mm -hmm. this position. In 2017, Georgina taxpayers transferred over $25 million to York Region and $8 million in water and wastewater charges. How can you work to ensure that Georgina taxpayers get their fair share of regional services? Absolutely. I mean, I think it's fair to say anybody that's been to the region will understand that we do get our fair share of regional services. Um, being a municipality that has a lower population and being a municipality that has um, housing values that are not as high as the south of us, we actually pay a little bit less to the region than our counterparts in the south, which is great for us. So we get a lot of the services without a lot of the cost. Um, the one thing that you have to make sure of at your, at your region council is that you maintain a strong voice. Because having only two members on a 20 member or 21 member council, you have to make sure that you have the people around you respecting enough to listen to you when you speak. So I believe that when I got in there two years ago, I earned the respect of other York Region councillors very quickly. They listen when I speak, they help me when we need help, and they support Georgina when we need that support. And so we've shown that over and over again. When we need services here in Georgina, the rest of York Region Council listens, and I want to continue to be that voice for Georgina. Thank you. Move to Lee. Uh, well, I think uh, the first evidence is the lack of support for the infrastructure in the community from the region. We have uh, a tremendous amount of regional roads within the community. The 404 almost came to Georgina, and uh, where it stopped was the lack of planning for the impact on our regional roads and, and all of our Georgina roads. Um, we have a transit system that isn't used effectively. Um, we have the only waterfront in York Region. We have an opportunity to use uh, transit and our partnerships with the region. Um, and I'll say for a loud voice, um, I, I'm waiting to see a, a regional initiative um, uh, for Georgina anywhere. I haven't seen one for a very long time. So I'll leave that there. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you know, the York Region is a $3 billion budget. And it's interesting what's happened the last couple of years. All you got to do is look at the Sutton Sewage Treatment Plant. In order to be able to build out the Sutton community and the work that we did as far as an official plan, you need that plant expanded. We're nowhere even on the radar screen as far as York Region. However, look at the hundreds of millions of dollars that have been spent on Highway 7 and up Young Street and through Newmarket to provide a transit system, yet we can't get basic sewage within the Sutton. And I haven't heard a word from our representatives at the table with respect to that. that. And, yet, and just as a smaller item, Dalton Road. We, re we recently saw Dalton Road go through a major in infrastructure improvement. But the east side of Dalton Road and the sidewalks is a disgrace. 
Danny Wheeler, quite frankly, would have never allowed the Transportation and Services Department at the region of York to do a project where they left it unfinished on one side of the road where you had a patchwork job of sidewalks. I can't believe that that's the kind of service that we got from the region of York. And as, time? Okay, okay. as your elected representative, I would challenge the, my regional colleague. I want to go on to one more question and then I'll open up for debate on either of the previous three, okay? Okay. So, this question. The proposed sewage treatment and water reclamation center, which is part of the Upper York sewage solution, has been designed to address the growth-related infrastructure needs south of us in Newmarket and East Columbia. The treated effluent will be discharged into the Holland River, which flows into Lake Simcoe. And critics have expressed concerns over the added contaminants that that would represent. What is your position regarding this $685 million project? Lee, you start. Well, uh, this is a big one, an important one. Uh, the health of Lake Simcoe is very important. Uh, I oppose the UISS as it's constituted now. Um, I'm glad to see that finally, after uh, just absolutely being ignored, that the Chippewa are starting to get some, some, some backing and some support. And uh, my my issue is is large. My issue is 40,000 liters uh, flowing into uh, a low flow area. It's pharmaceutical impact that they can't measure. 40 million liters. 40 million. Did I say thousand? Yeah. I apologize. Yeah, 40, 40 million liters. Yeah. Uh, there, there's several issues with this project that, that just to make it uh, a situation where it, it would be foolhardy for anybody to approve. Um, they need it for infrastructure down there, and uh, I think it would be irresponsible for any three, uh, either the three of us or any of the mayor candidates to be able to sit here and say that they alone could stop this project, because that's just not the way it works. It's one vote. Thank you. Thank you. Rob, to you. Dave, I was at the region of York uh, many years ago when the York-Durham sewage system was built and designed and the infrastructure was put in place for all of that growth in East Quillenberry, and it is still there today. Um, so I have a fundamental challenge with the region, and I did when I was there, and I was one of the only voices, and I came back to our council, and I let it be known that we didn't want the Upper York sewage system because of its effects on a shallow river, the Holland River, a shallow bay, Cook's Bay, yet I haven't heard anything from anybody who's representing us at the region of York over the last couple of years saying anything about the Upper York sewage system. The whole purpose of the Upper York sewage system is to allow more growth in the southern part of York region. Hello people, it's about the white belt lands that are north of Markham, Vaughan and Richmond Hill up to the Oak Ridges Moraine that aren't developed now and aren't part of their official plans and the only way you get them in is if you have capacity in a pipe so you divert it north and you have more capacity south. Time there to Naomi on, on this on this question. Thank you. Absolutely. This has been uh, this has been front of mind since I started two years ago, and it was something that came to our council uh, via our regional representatives in the previous term as well. Um, absolutely. There's no need to have the outflow come um, from from that project to Lake Simcoe. As was mentioned before, the infrastructure is there to turn around and send it down to Lake Ontario. I understand why um, the region has had to look at this option because the previous provincial government told them that they had to. We have a new provincial government now. This issue currently is in the province's hands. So as much as um, I would like to be able to work through regional council to get this done, we have to work with the provincial government now to get this done. We have a new provincial government. We have discussed this already with our M. PP, um, our new MPP for this area, and uh, to get it on their agenda. They're going to have to get caught up on the issue because it's going to take them a while. It's a big file. It's a lot of information. But uh, when it does, we're going to work with them to get it turned around and put it back with the original infrastructure back to Lake Ontario. Yeah. I'm going to open up now for debate on any of the pre previous three questions. I know there's some people wanting to make points, whether on the uh, Maple Lake Estates, Regional Services or the UYSS. And I know, uh, Rob, do you want to start? And then we'll come to Naomi and if Lee wants some... Yeah, sure. With respect to the Upper York Sewage System, you know, um, we have opposed it, at least at our council in the past. I haven't heard that. So, you know, for Naomi to say, well, yes, we've been discussing it. You, you'll remember that when the 404 was being proposed, if I wasn't there, 
almost on a continual basis at regional council arguing that we need the 404 extended and then them saying well it's going to end at Queensville side road and arguing well you can't let it stop at Queensville side road you can't just go to regional council and say well we're going to meet the, in this room and we're going to talk you got to be very vocal people have to know that the upper york sewage system is not acceptable you've got 20 other people around that table who quite frankly don't care Lake Simcoe has nothing to do with them. It has a lot to do with the town of Georgina. We have to be vocal. And the Chippewas of Georgina were not even going to be engaged in any discussion until I made it known at Regional Council that we would take them to court. And we would at least allow the, the Chippewas, because they thought, well, they consulted with the Chippewas. Well, consultation with uh, First Nations is a lot different than consultation with you and me. No, I mean, right, and in public consultation. You also want to weigh in on the Maple Lake Estates question. Yeah, you know, I think I need to speak to that too, though. I mean, he's he's standing here talking about how he hasn't heard anything. Well, pay attention. We have we've had letters going back <laughs> I, and forth. I paid a lot of attention, okay. and I haven't seen anything. Yeah. So tell I me believe it's my turn to speak. Naomi, you know, sure. at any point in time, if you wanted to know what was going on, you and I know each other very well. You could have picked up the phone, but you didn't. What you did is you contacted the media. You went straight to the newspaper. Don't go to the newspaper. Come to so our I, council. I, I, I want you to could Made, well, we'll after I think you leave. could perhaps let me finish speaking I, I first. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, you hand out and your mouth open. <laughs> the, uh, I think the important, uh, the important thing to note is that at any point in time, if a resident wants to speak to this council, they can come and make a deputation at our council. They can contact even any one of us. I'm open to any phone conversations. Never received that. The first I heard about it was when I read a newspaper article that had a flip comment about um, a negative attitude. Never, ever once called me to make that convers to make that concern known, and that could have been done. Thank this you. is somebody that I worked Lee, with for four years. I just want to touch on what I've heard here very quickly. Um, I, I know it's fun for Rob to tell everyone that he was a cheerleader for the 404. He forgot that it missed Georgina and it's impacted us because of that and, and the impact to our regional roads because of the lack of planning because he was too busy cheerleading. Um, and the fact of the matter is, is we all watched him jump in a race. We jumped in a race on an environmental issue. You know, it's, it's ironic considering he had to resign from the LSRCA, but hey, pick your campaign, I guess, and that's all I gotta say. You know, this is a serious okay, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you rebut well, very you know, briefly. This is, I, I don't think this is being a flippant issue. This is a serious issue, and I think it's really important to understand whether you're talking about the Upper York Sewage System or <laughs> Maple Leaf Estates. That article that was in the newspaper quoted the regional chairman as saying how frustrated the region was and that weren't getting approval from the province of Ontario. Okay, I'm gonna move there, on to the next was question. Was there a quote from any of our local representatives? No, there wasn't. Well, the media you know, was going to the next question. No, no, there wasn't. That's there, their choice. There was nothing else that was That's their choice. I'm That's going to move on to the next question now, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and the first question starts off with Rob. Okay, so some services, such as policing, are currently organized at the regional level. Uh, some, such as waste collection, is organized by groups of municipalities, such as the Northern Six. Should we be looking at amalgamating more services at the regional level, such as fire services? Most definitely. I think that if there's any service that you can combine the service and uh, provide that service, um, as long as you can meet the same service standards, um, then certainly it's been proven in the past that that will work. And I don't have any problem discussing any of those services. As a taxpayer, I want to be able to save more money um, when it comes to my taxes and the taxes that I pay and if it means amalgamating services. You know, one of the perfect examples is uh, billing, you know, tax billing. There are nine different programs at nine different municipalities in New York region. Why isn't there some sort of an amalgamated tax billing service? We talked about it in the past. And, you know, I would hope that going forward, people will look at the amalgamation of services and how they can better provide those services to the residents that we represent. Thank you. Naomi. Absolutely. The Northern Six Municipalities work together on a number of objectives. Um, we have new things coming from our, our CAOs that meet together all the time and things that we can save money. We'll, we'll either increase our buying power going together or 
um, like our animal services, for example, we share from other municipalities. We have more initiatives coming from Northern Six municipalities all the time. Um, with respect to fire services, uh, it's a hot button topic. It's definitely been discussed. We looked at it as a possibility. Um, it's not off the table, but at this point, we're not seeing a benefit from our perspective. Um, for example, East Gwillimbury is just building up their full time fire force. We have 44 full time firefighters. We know that when something happens in the town of Georgina, we have enough firefighters to respond on that truck at all times. In East Gwillimbury, a lot of them are vol uh, volunteer and they have to get to the station to go. So I wouldn't want to downgrade our level of service in any way, shape or form through amalgamation. So at this point, I'd look at it, um, but I, we wouldn't move forward on it unless it was uh, to benefit to us. And I apologize for smiling when you said fire service was a hot button issue. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot. Really? It is hot. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I support amalgamation. I, uh, I think it's important for, for, for services to be combined uh, for a cost value standpoint. Um, I do think that the fire service is going to come up, um, just judging by the, the flavor of uh, the candidates in the southern six uh, of the region. Um, my commitment is to make sure that any uh, regionalized fire service talk uh, includes a vote with the Firefighters Association, the way of our uh, extraordinary landscape. We have a very different community from, from the rest in York Region, and that would be an important factor into deciding whether the fire service should be regionalized. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks very much. I'm going to go on to the next question, uh, pick up some time here. I want to talk about this, make sure we get in this specific Georgina question. And you can expect it's on the Merck and the Civic Center. Do you agree that we should be spending $30 million plus operation costs on the proposed multi-use recreation center and another $30 million on a new civic center? If so, why? But Justify it. Cost. Pardon? The cost. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I didn't know. Excuse me. Excuse me for misspeaking. Thank you for judging. No problem. Um, and if so, justify that. Why? If you're opposed, why? Um, Naomi, you're first in on this one. I get to speak first. Thank you. Um, I'll speak to the Merck first. Um, that was one of the things I campaigned on eight years ago. So when I was elected to Georgina, I was given a mandate from the people that I represent to get a recreation facility for South Keswick. And so from my perspective, I wanted to get it done, but at the same time, I wanted to make sure that we could do it in a financially responsible way. So here we are, we've created a development charges bylaw that includes uh, the money set aside so that it's 90% funded. We got seven hectares of land or just over seven hectares of land for a parkland dedication, so we didn't have to pay for that. And now we're gonna move forward with the, the bill in a responsible manner. So from my perspective, I'm very excited about that. Um, the impact to the taxpayers will be very low compared to the amazing service that we're going to get from that facility. So I'm excited about it. I'm ready to move forward on that one. The, uh, with respect to the Civic Center, it's a little more challenging. Um, we had to look at it and we had to decide what we're going to do. The building is failing. And so we had to make a decision. Do we keep putting money into an old building or do we build new this knowing that it's our time now. It will take care of the future. Thank you very much. Move to Lee. Well, i got to say one minute. It's going to be hard to get both of these subjects in. Uh, I've always supported a Merck. I don't support the way uh, Council's currently um, going after it. It's no secret. I've made that very vocal. But um, I think we need to take partnerships more seriously. I think uh, Council's decision last night, uh, a few weeks before an election, to release half a million dollars for project management was a mistake um, before having all the stakeholders at the table as far as partnerships go. Um, I also think it's a mistake to build a, another library. Uh, George, you know, Keswick alone, you know, is in the 26, 27,000 uh, resident range. Um, to add another library, I think it's irresponsible. Uh, and as far as the Civic Center goes, uh, it's a health risk. It, it's, it's a staff risk. If it was a private building, I mean, it would be condemned. I mean, it, it's, it's unfortunate, but it's the way it is. I, I do support uh, a hub system uh, where Pefferla, uh, Sutton, we create a, a hub for outreach, and uh, I don't support such a big build, no. Thank you. Thank you very much. Rob? Uh, yeah, we planned and we funded the uh, Merck in the past with reserves that we set aside for that facility. Um, I have a, a problem with some of the things that they're suggesting, one of them being a library. I'm not sure whether we necessarily need a second library in the Keswick area. We have a library that isn't open um, on Mondays, for example, in Keswick today. So the operating costs alone in the new library are supposed to be half a million dollars. I'm not sure that we can afford that. 
I'm wondering why we haven't approached Magna as a uh, sponsor. Do they want some naming rights? They have lots of employees in the town of Georgina. Has anyone picked up the phone and said, gee, would you like to call it the Magna Georgina, um, uh, you know, uh, Merck, and have them pay some money? What about talking to some tenants? What about Starbucks or Pita Pit or anybody else? There's lots of creative ways you can defer the costs. And the operating costs are going to be very interesting. The Civic Center is a whole other issue. I don't think that we can afford to build a new Taj Mahal type facility okay. today. That's time there. I'm going to let this uh, go to some debate for a while because it has some indication. Also, nobody in, in their uh, comments addressed the fact if they felt it was appropriate for council to go ahead at this point in time in the lame duck period no. to award a million dollars in... Um, in, in management fees, a million dollars in contracts overall. I would like to speak to that start. if I could please. Um, first off, I want to be very clear, our council is not lame duck. So we are not in a lame duck period, uh, absolutely not. We have enough people acclaimed and enough people running again, we're not in a lame duck period. So you can be clear with that with the clerk later on. So um, the other, with respect to um, spending the money last night, no problem setting it forward. That money was set aside in the 2017 budget for this for this project, it was reallocated in the 2018 budget for this project. We're just moving forward. We're not going to let an election slow us down on a project that we've been working on for the past eight, well, six, four to six years. So, yes, the decision was made. There is an out clause if the, if the following council needs to make an adjustment to it. But, um, no, it wasn't a new expenditure. This is something that was budgeted in 2017. And I think also, too, to speak to the sponsorship program, you'll be happy to know that we have actually looked into that. There's a report coming to next month. Uh, you, the, the agenda for next week's meeting is released this morning. Um, and you can take a look at it, and you can see the details of the sponsorship program that's already been created. So, of course, we're looking at that. We're looking okay, at naming rights to everything. We're low Please. on time. Let Rob get so, you know, lame duck, and, and sure there is a uh, protocol. Was, was Lee first? Yes, no, sorry, okay. Rob, sorry, no. sorry. You know, but there's protocol, David. When an election is called, and from the date of the election to the election, councils, every council in the town of Georgina has always said, we will not put forward major expenditures until the new council is in place. It doesn't matter whether it's lame duck or not. It's proper protocol. And this council obviously didn't want to, uh, you know, secede to proper protocol. They just went ahead with expenditures that, quite frankly, may be reconsidered after the election. Okay, that's ridiculous. And to say that we're, that that we're not being responsible. He said that we're yeah, responsible. Yeah, but I'm going to let Lee come back first. Well, that's not accurate at all. Well, that's your opinion. As, as, as I mentioned in my, in my uh, one-minute statement there, I, I don't agree with what happened last night. I think it was irresponsible, and uh, I think it was very telling that uh, the consultant Coyley mentioned that he had spoke to the Y just hours before the council meeting. Um, I don't think they've taken partnership seriously, and I, and I think they've, that sh shows through. Uh, there's not expected to be boots or shovels in the ground till the first quarter of 2020. Um, what six weeks to uh, properly lodge out uh, proper partnerships and know what you're getting into instead of rushing because you, you want your council and your mayor to have a legacy. I think it's ridiculous and inappropriate. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah, think I think that's Rob got anything to do with it. I last comment, second time around last time, so Naomi, last comment, you know, you're not you. going to get another one. I very much appreciate oh, that. Okay. I, think, um, I think it's important to note that this was a budgeted for item, um, and I think what would be irresponsible is for the town to shut down for an election. We still have things to do. We have roads that we budgeted for, and we built those roads. Roads. We had vehicles that we had to purchase. We purchased those. We go through purchasing. The town does not shut down because we're in an election period. This was budgeted in 2017, repeated in 2018. We're just moving forward with the business of the town. Okay, it's good. Thanks. Protocol. Let's move on to the next question now. The and this is going to go to Lee first. Okay. The suggestion has been made that this will be the last election under the current structure. What is your position on the amalgamation of York Region municipalities into one or two cities? Is that the end? Yeah, well, uh, I, I do take exception to that. Uh, I think we've always uh, fat, uh, fit as a square and a round hole as far as uh, joining York Region. I think uh, in some respects it doesn't represent our locale, our residents and our situation very well. And I think uh, with amalgamation of, of York Region, I think it would, it would cause exception to um, create more of a loss than we're already experiencing here, in, here in, in Georgina. Thank you. Thank you. To Rob? 
You know, as a taxpayer, I'm open to those discussions. I remember those discussions in the past. If it makes more sense to provide services on a more regionalized basis, and whether it's a city of York Region um, and we have representation at that table, I'm not really that concerned about the, uh, the form. I think we have to look at it. Um, and if it makes more sense, then let's have a good, frank discussion. I'm not here to protect uh, political jobs within the region of New York. If it makes more sense in serving the people that yeah, I have had the privilege of serving um, in that sort of a different form, then I'm okay with that. Okay. I would actually disagree. I think um, while we look at amalgamation of services is great, our municipality needs to retain its own voice. Georgina just had its 200th anniversary. The people that live in this community are connected to it. We're not much like people in Markham and people in Vaughan. I mean, we have things that are similar, but we live a different lifestyle here, right? We have farms and we have forests and we love who we are. And if we went to a city of York scenario, we would probably have one representative that we would share with East Gwillimbury. And where would our voice be then? We need the upper and the lower tier government so that in the lower tier for Georgina, the town of Georgina maintains our 200 year history and continues on for another 200 years so that we can create maintain our unique position in York Region. Um, we're, we're not similar to the South, although we can work with them through the upper tier of York Region. Okay. I will accept nothing more than 15 seconds. Well, I think we should leave it. I don't think it, our opinion necessarily means a lot. I think we should leave it up to the people of York Region. If they think that it makes sense that we should have a different form of government, let them speak up. Okay. I, I just want to quickly say, on, on the opposite to what Rob's saying, um, I think the people of Georgina should have a say in it, and so I disagree that just well, Georgina the people is of part York, York Re Region. Okay. Well, I think that definitely the region, the York Region, can't speak for us because there's so many more people in the South than there are here, and if we let everybody in York Region make this decision, we won't have a voice at all. I think Georgina needs to maintain our voice, and you that's think? important, and our town's important. Thank you very much. Okay, let's move on to the next question. This one goes to Rob to start us off. Say, so you mentioned the 404 earlier. I want to ask a question about the 404 sure. because it's provided a great boom to developers. But already, we see morning traffic jams starting at Green Lane. Traffic jams on eastbound Ravenshoe. Go operates on a schedules that limit the availability for people to be able to use it effectively as a commuter tool. How do you propose to address the transportation needs of Georgina residents? Well, you know, great question. Um, uh, yeah, that's where you need intervention from your partners, whether it's provincial or, um, or regional. One of the things that should immediately be on the table, and I'm not her sure that I've heard much locally, is the Bradford Bypass. We need that connection. There aren't very many... 400 series highways that don't have a, any connectivity. The Bradford Bypass has been part of the infrastructure discussions for the last 30 or 40 years. It needs to be on the table, it needs to be done. The whole Ravenshoe Road corridor, you know, dumping the amount of traffic there, we need something to be done and, and I, you know, I know when we, the 404 was extended, there was lots of discussion about the improvements that needed to be made. I just wish that the province and the region would address both of those, especially the region. Who's, where's the region when it comes to doing work on Ravenshoe Side Road? And what about the extension of the 404 that they had spoken about? Yeah. Naomi. Absolutely. Thank you. It's been something that I've been working on for sure, looking at uh, the transit in Georgina. We're actually going to a, a dial-a-ride transit service in 2019 during the day because there's so few people on the buses. So we'll have a system where you, know, you just call, they'll pick you up and bring you where you need to go because the buses are so empty and it's going to cost less to do it that way. We have to find a way to get people to move towards a transit system, but we can't ask them to take the transit. It's going to take them an hour and a half to get to work versus a 25-minute car ride. So it is something I think I would have to agree uh, with Rob that uh, it is something that we need to look at provincially uh, as well. And uh, I mean, ideally, if we can get more jobs in town, fewer people are going to have to get on that highway. So from an economic development perspective, that's where we need to work. Um, we're, we've got some economic development plans coming in the next few weeks that will be interesting for people to see with um, front of the line service for uh, new job creation businesses and uh, some of the other things that are coming up for incent to incentivize businesses to come here. We're even looking at rebating some of their costs of getting their okay. development permits That's to get them there. here and then fewer people will have to drive. And we'll move to Lee on the transportation question. Uh, the 400-404 link, as, as Rob mentioned, it, it is going to be uh, paramount. It's been bandied about. They attempted it. There's environmental studies a long time ago, as Rob knows. 
Um, provincial and regional partners are going to be very important and push that initiative forward. Uh, I think there should be a very large push to continue that. Uh, likewise, uh, the push to continue the 404. Um, but the extension of the 404 has to be done more responsibly than we've done it now. Uh, just dumping it in Glenwoods or dumping it somewhere else in Georgina is not going to alleviate the problem. It's just going to cause somebody else's family to be injured pulling out of their driveway. Um, I think there has to be a tremendous focus on infrastructure. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any uh, comments on that one? No, okay. So we'll move on to what might be our last question then. Arguably, regional government is the most important level of government in terms of how it impacts uh, on the residents of the community. A lot of the decisions and actions affect residents' lives in ways that most of them don't really understand or are aware of. <laughs> How are we going to change that program? What do you see your role as the elected regional councillor? What do you see that the role as the elected regional councillor? And what would be your first priority in this position? And our clock has got Naomi is first up on this one. Very good, thank you. Uh, wow, that's a big question. Um, I think the role of the regional councillor is to ensure that Georgina's needs are met at that regional level and make sure that we're heard. So uh, as I mentioned before, a big part of that is having the respect of the people around us because on a 21 person council, you need to make sure that they listen when you speak. So I feel like I've done that in the last two years and I'll continue to do that. My first priority going forward for the region is we need to deal with housing. That's my number one. There's a couple of things I'd like to see. We need a new long-term care facility in Georgina so that people whose um, family members are moving to long-term care can have them locally and they don't have to travel to visit. Um, people in long-term care homes need visitors and it's really hard to do so if you're not close by. So we need to work with the higher levels of government to make that happen here. The other thing that we need is what I mentioned before is the purpose-built rental housing. So we need to have creation of either rental housing or condo units, something where new families that are starting out can purchase a home or rent a home or seniors that are downsizing can choose to stay in Georgina because right now if they that's, want to downsize out of the home, now. that they're okay. going to have to move and we don't want that. Thank we want you. them to stay here. Lee? Um, well, as Naomi said, you know, it's a 21 person council and it's extremely important to make sure that uh, Georgina's voice is heard loud and clear. I think that's uh, an important message. Um, it's hard with upper tier and lower tier, but there needs to be some semblance of reciprocation, and I think that's been missing in Georgina for a long time, um, certainly over the last two terms. My uh, biggest focus for sure would be uh, taxation and infrastructure. I feel that our roads, uh, especially regional roads and road projects, are falling you know, too far behind. Um, we're at a significant deficit, and any future uh, uh, builds are not planning to fix what's been damaged in the past. Um, I think a lot of issues will arise as we grow and expand and we haven't made proper uh, smart common sense plans to deal with the flow of traffic. Uh, everybody wants to go to work and come home safely at the end of the evening and unfortunately you know our economic development uh, has been such in this community that everybody has to drive somewhere to get to work. Thank you. Thank you. Rob, your, your, your role as regional councillor. Yeah, so um, with all due respect to uh, Naomi, the last elected regional councillor in the town of Georgina was our late friend Danny Wheeler. And um, I, I, it's well known that I was opposed to the way we appointed um, the current regional councillor. I'm glad there's an election and we're going through that process. Probably the biggest issue is our environment. Um, Lake Simcoe is our most important asset. And the Upper York sewage system, um, other than you know putting, I think there's a million dollars they're set aside in the last while to talk with the Chippewas about how it may impact them. Well, I don't want to talk with anybody. I want to oppose the Upper York sewage system. The infrastructure is in place to take that sewage south. Why all of a sudden is it changed north? Well, it's dollars. That's what it is. And finally, somebody's got to speak up on our behalf. And besides that, our fair share of the infrastructure dollars, the three billion dollars that's being spent at the region of York annually, I think we need to get our fair share. Yeah, it's your time. Uh, we've got some time for debate on this. I know Lee's indicated he'd like to jump way uh, in. Not so much on the on on what I had mentioned, but uh, the UISS keeps popping up, and I, I just want to make it clear. I think it was very evident from all three of us that all three of us are, in our own way, very opposed to this project. So, 
you know, I know it's fun to keep throwing it out there, but uh, I just want to say that. Thank you. Yeah, but Lee, it's I'm one sure thing. That's true, Lee. Lee, it's one thing to say that we're opposed to it, and I agree with you, we're opposed to it. But our current representatives, quite frankly, have not voiced much of a concern at the regional table. You've got to be. Can you stop very, it, Rob? Very loud. Can you can can you tell these people right now that you can stop it? I, Are I you going to be disingenuous? I would be. I, I mean, would we've be, lived through I, you for the last no, twenty I years. So very, we know. I would be very. Pardon me. Off you go. Pardon me. Off you go. Enjoy. I would, I would be, as I have been in the past, a very loud voice on behalf of this community to try to halt the Upper York Sioux. Okay, I'm going to let Naomi weigh sure. in here because you made a comment about her. Sure. I think it's I think it's important to note that um, being a loud voice on the council isn't necessarily always affected. I mean, you were on, you were talking loudly about the Upper York Sewage Solution. You didn't turn it around when you were on then. What makes mm -hmm. you think you can do it now? It frustrates me to no end when, he, when, when my way of functioning through, quietly working with other people, talking to levels of government, it's past the regional table now. It is at the provincial level now, and you yelling and screaming at regional council isn't going to do anything but lose the respect of the people around you. We have to work with the people at the table. We have to help them to understand what's going on, and we have to work with a higher level of government because, frankly, that's where the Upper York is right now. Yeah. It's at the provincial level, and we have to do that. So you may not like my style, but your style didn't work. Well, and you know, so okay. that's we're, where we're, we're at. My style got elected we're, many times serving in this we're, municipality we're out of time 17 on this, years uh, as the mayor, so I'll challenge Thank you on you any much. day you want to challenge We're, we're going to have to move now to uh, the closing statements. Sure. And our closing statements go in reverse order from where we uh, how we opened, so that means uh, Lee Dale, you are first. You have one minute for your closing. Oh, I'm statement. first. Okay. I, there's a clear choice for the ever growing group of residents supporting my campaign. Time for fresh eyes, fresh ideas, and a new, fresh voice. Residents are inundated with comments from career politicians about experience. This is a politi politician's favorite word. Except, what experience are we talking about? Do we want to continue down the road of high taxes and low service levels? How about the terrible state of our waterfront beaches and boat launches? Do we want to go another four years not actually building our commercial and industrial tax base? We deserve jobs in our community. It's time to elect someone with the real world experience, the real track record of standing with residents and the desire to do what needs to be done. We all know what has ailed us for the, as a community over the last 20 plus years. Instead of rewarding politicians with another term, choose to move Georgina forward and not back. Please check out my website, votelydale.com, reach out on social media, and most importantly, get out and vote. Join a winning team that has the support, and with your vote, I can get in and make a difference. On October 22nd, vote Lee Dale for Regional Councillor. Thank, thank you. you very much. Naomi Davison. Thank you, Dave. Uh, thank you all for listening to the debates today. I'd like to make it clear that I'm ready to continue to work hard for the future of Georgina. You can help us to keep us moving forward steadily but surely towards the kind of town we all want. A town that is inclusive, fiscally responsible and founded on fair policies. A thriving economy to run as successful businesses. A beautiful town to enjoy our, our leisure time. And a safe place to raise our families. You can help. For honesty, integrity and experience, for Regional Councillor, vote Naomi Davison. Thank you. Closing statements, Rob Gross. First of all, I want to thank you, David, for uh, for doing this and volunteering your time. Thank you to uh, Rogers TV, Georgina, and the Georgina Chamber of Commerce, and everybody who's volunteered to be here today. Um, you know, you know who I am. You know my commitment in the past to this municipality and the kind of work that I've done and the volunteer uh, positions that I've had within this community. Um, I want you to think about voting for an elected representative for regional council. Um, someone who is experienced, someone who is knowledgeable. On October 22nd, um, please vote Robert Grassi for your next regional councillor in the town of Georgina. Please go to my website, votegrassi at rogers.com. Thank you once again, and everybody, please get out and vote. Thank you. All the candidates, I think it was an excellent uh, discussion, excellent debate, some of the key issues facing the residents of Georgina in this upcoming municipal election. I also want to thank the uh, committee that worked on preparing the questions for the debate. Uh, and I want to thank yourself, viewers, for taking part by participating and viewing this show to inform yourself of the important issues facing you as you come to make your decision looking to the municipal election on October 22nd. Uh, this debate will air on Rogers Television along with the debates for the other open positions uh, every day until October 22nd, Election Day. The debate will also be available on Rogers TV and our Facebook page. To all our Georgina residents, get out and vote in the advance polls on Election Day. My name is Dave Selassie. Thank you for watching. <laughs>